What's good guys? Welcome back to another video. So here we are in Ukraine and we are not in the center of Kyiv right now. We're a little bit outside and I want to show you a different neighborhood of how you know your regular people live, right? This is a, not a center. This is not downtown and we're going to be showing you exactly. I'm going to be explaining you the buildings, the history, everything. For instance, what you're seeing right in front of me it used to be a, uh, a movie theater uh, in the name of Gagarin, which was a famous astronaut in the 60s in the Soviet Union. And this is obviously all in the, the disrepair. It's, you know, it hasn't been really taken care of. But about the uh, 90s or 2000s, it was actually in full swing working. And then I think it was closed down in 2006. So this is what it looks like now. A nice relic of Soviet architecture. And so in this part of, uh, of Kiev here, you kind of have two types of buildings that are built. You have these brick buildings and then you have the so-called panelka stuff. And the thing about the brick buildings is they're a lot better. Like they're just, they, they're, they're going to be here for, you know, for many, many years to come. While the panelka, which I'm going to show you in a second, is the newer technology in quotes, quote unquote. And that building has a lot of problems. It doesn't maintain heat as well. There's a lot of issues. And so summer is always a good time to hang out in, in Ukraine, in Eastern Europe because uh, everything is green, right? Everything is green. In the winter, you're not gonna have any of this. It's gonna be full of snow. Obviously, you have cars getting into this pedestrian areas, which I gotta say has increasingly been pissing me off a lot. But this is Eastern Europe, right? You're not gonna see this in America, obviously. But this is Eastern Europe. It's a different lifestyle, different thing. And then you have your kids' playgrounds. Uh, here and there just opposite a building so that kids have somewhere to play to hang out Which is kind of cool, too. And the nice thing about this kind of area or Nice not nice whatever you want to call it is the fact that you have stores right nearby now You're not gonna have a big Mega market here a mega shopping mall nearby What you're gonna have is these little stores now arguably this is a little bit of a bigger store right but what you're gonna have is these kinds of stores that are just built, you know, in the park, in the green, right? They're not, you know, officially licensed. They're not, you know, anything official about these stores, but they have them and they sell all kinds of different things, which makes it very, very useful uh, for, you know, buying whatever you want. So for instance, up there you see suha fructe, which means uh, dried fruits. And you can go in there, you can buy, you know, dried fruits, you can buy, uh, things that are very similar as well Other things lots of interesting things here. You have some um, sausages Sir masla, which is cheese and butter and then you have more stores over there front of us is the famous park called Babin Yar. And for those of you who didn't know, this is where the massacre happened. Uh, a lot of Jewish people died here. A lot of um, also uh, some other nationality as well. I think it was in 1942 or 1943. And so this is a very kind of big deal here because it was one of the biggest massacres of uh, the Jewish population in World War II. So I actually knew about this, but I had no idea this park was here. I thought it was way, way beyond outside of Kiev. But it's actually, you know, in, in Kiev, not in the center, but fairly close. So this is something very interesting. The park is actually pretty nice. Up ahead, we have the metro. You see that M over there? This is the, That stands for the metro. We have a station here. We have another station there. And now we're going to walk and I'm going to show you a different part of Kiev, kind of like 
what it looks like beyond these commercial areas. It's actually very, very cool and very interesting. Another busy street. This is the busiest street in this neighborhood. And you have all kinds of interesting things that you can buy. Fruits, veggies, potatoes. You have some nice strawberries, some cherries. Thankfully the season is in swing right now. We have some more things over there. Unfortunately they don't really take a credit card. Which is annoying. And this is kind of the Commerce Avenue, right? This is what? Broadway in New York Big big important street and a lot of these neighborhoods they have streets like this Every one of these out neighborhoods outside they have streets like this right people just come Start selling their wares on the street And that's kind of what you have nothing official Nothing registered no permits Nothing like that Now when we leave the street You're gonna be in a different world and so as soon as you leave the main street, you're in a different world. And we first realized that when we were walking around this neighborhood, and I was familiar with this, but nevertheless, it's kind of interesting because you have that main street, you leave, and you are kind of in the suburbs, right? You have a lot of greenery, you have just, you know, people just chilling. And so, by the way, if you look at this building right here, that's a panelka, right? This is not a brick building anymore, and these are... A little bit worse than the brick buildings because the brick buildings are regarded to be more reliable, right? They stand for many, many years. Panelkas, 50, 60 years, and then they start kind of falling apart. And they don't really look, they don't look as good. You could tell that this is a Soviet building. It's not that old school brick design. We have some people uh, doing some maintenance with the pipes over there. That wasn't here last time, I promise you. And on the right hand side, we have a truly Soviet building, which looks like absolute disaster. Now, when we were in Armenia recently, we saw a lot of these Soviet buildings, but they just look a lot better. But take a look at this building. Take a look at this. This is, I don't know, absolute craziness. You gotta admit that the brick building looks a lot better than that. You have here, here, your, your kid's playground, your, um, you know, your little uh, workout uh, stations here, which seem to be in Ukraine, like, you know, every every block here. You have this kids' playground. And this looks a lot newer to be, right? A little bit, little more high quality, some monkey bars, uh, stuff like that, where you can do dips, you can do pull-ups, chin-ups. Really, really cool, right? If you don't have access to a gym. And we have the obligatory wine bottle right here, you know, if you want to have a sip I think there's something left over there and here we have a little bit of a square which is nice you know people can come together hang out and it says here Alea Molodes which means Alea Square Youth Youth Square during the World War II, 1941 to 1943, the, uh, the Nazis shot all uh, the whole team of the Kiev Dynamo football team. And, um, you know, your regular people of Ukraine, right? Mirne Zhitele Ukraine, which means uh, just regular people, right? Like just peaceful people in Ukraine in this area. So this, this whole neighborhood it is very very rich in history there's a lot of things happening here and it's very very you know you're going to find a lot of history a lot of soviet stuff a lot of world war ii stuff it's very interesting you got a car here parking on the sidewalk even though you have a lot of space here and here you have another house and this is panelka as well you can see how it's how it's kind of glued together it's not the right term but you see it's like 
these connections, these great connections. That is how you can tell a Panelka house. You have your obligatory balconies which are boarded up all over Ukraine. Very common. And you know why they do that? Because they keep all their crap there. You know, crap they don't want to sell. All of their crap. Those are kind of nice over there. Those balconies are kind of cute. But for the most part, you know, this is where a lot of people st stole their, you know, stuff they don't even use. And to tell you the truth, this is my favorite part about Ukraine in the summer. These neighborhoods, this, this greenery, you know, Ukraine is a very, very green country. It's more green than, you know, a lot of places in the U.S. It's, uh, you know, greener than, than Southern Europe, right? It's, it has a lot, of, a lot of beautiful trees, a lot of, you know, a lot of gardens, a lot of parks, a lot of little alleys. That is something that the Soviet people did fairly well. And that is definitely something that I like, but only in the summer, obviously. Because in the winter, come winter, this place is, is going to look like hell. At least in my opinion, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be devoid of all these green leaves, all these trees, stuff like that. But right now, it looks absolutely beautiful. And so the other thing you guys got to understand is that 99% of the people that live here, this is a very important fact, they own their own apartments, right? So you're not going to have stuff like in New York, in Brooklyn, you know, where I am like, where I grew up, right? This is kind of what I understand. People constantly renting. 99% of people own apartments, okay? So that means they don't have to pay for the apartment. The only thing they have to pay is a little bit of maintenance, just a little bit. And then they have to pay for utilities, which is all very, very cheap, right? And plus, if they're over a certain age, they're gonna get, uh, they're gonna get, you know, discounts and stuff like that so that is something also to keep in mind and that means that for 99 percent people here i would even say almost only oh, yeah, not another 100 i mean you're gonna have a couple of people here and there uh, renting apartments but for 99 percent of people their expenses are almost nothing right they they live here they don't have they don't have to work even right i mean they still have to work a little bit for food and stuff but the amount of work they have to do for the amount of disposable income they need is minimal absolutely minimal compared to a place like new york where you have bills where you have this where you have that very very important fact. we have as you can see this is an attachment this obviously wasn't there when this building was built but we have an attachment somebody decided to build it I don't know who it was maybe somebody on the first floor with that first floor apartment they decided to build something extra and I have no maybe it's an office it doesn't look like an office but it's something extra obviously you shouldn't be able to do that but people do it from time to time obviously it's Eastern Europe in the first place I'm walking we stumbled upon this beautiful marvel of soviet engineering look at that lada right here this lada has been here since the days of stalin probably or the days of brezhnev at least look at this one it's completely glued to the ground it's it's still standing but it's completely <laughs> it's part it's part of earth and soon earth is going to take it back part of Kiev it feels like we've left Kiev it doesn't even feel like we're in Kiev anymore we're somewhere far away but yet in 10 minutes you're gonna be in, sen in the center of Kiev even though you're so secluded and this is how the neighborhoods would, were built here this is how the houses were built they're secluded from everything right you have you have the main road which is just like only five blocks uh, that way where I'm walking right now and you have the main road but other than that, it's quiet, it's chill, nothing is happening, and you feel like you're in a dacha. 
which is a Russian term for a country house in America, you would call it like that. On the left side we have garages, right? These are typical storage units that people either buy or rent out. We also have a, a house over there, just a private house, not a apartment building. And that is because you can pretty much build anything you want. If there's land, you can buy it and you can build anything you want. There's no zoning laws. I mean, there are some zoning laws, obviously, but not like in the West. You can pretty much... So you have this private area where you have more houses over there. And I'm going to show you more in a second. Another thing I want to point out is the fact that a lot of people own these apartments, right? And what does that mean? That means that they really didn't have to work as much yeah they worked in the soviet union but it's not like in the u.s right i come to new york i work my butt off to to get a mortgage on some condo once i do that i'm gonna take care of that condo i'm gonna keep it nice i'm gonna make sure nothing bad happens to it because it's my investment ultimately but here there's less responsibility right people are um you know they own it right they own it they don't have to make the balconies nice they don't have to you know clean up they don't have to, you know, protect, uh, you know, the, the house from the cars parking everywhere they want. There's a lot less responsibility. And this is probably an, a topic, I'm touching upon a topic, a bigger topic that I'll probably make another video on. But this is an important fact, right? Because once you own something, you really, and you haven't really worked that, that hard for it, right? This is, you know, we're talking about Soviet Union and all that. There's less responsibility. You, you're... You know, you don't really care as much about upkeep and taking care of it, etc, etc. And that, that is why a lot of these buildings, they look like complete shit from the outside. Because people don't really, you know, don't really care. Whereas if you go to a richer area in Kiev or Ukraine, where they have to actually buy them, they're going to look a lot better, a lot nicer, because they actually work for them. And they want to make sure they look good. And here you have your white picket fence. That's very, very common in American suburbs. And I actually have never seen this in Ukraine. This is the first time I'm seeing it. And on this side, we have kind of, you know, this ingrown leaves, this, uh, um, you know, the green, the green stuff that has been grown everywhere. But here it's, look at this, absolutely beautiful. Now imagine all of Ukraine looked like that, or at least all of Kiev looked like this. It would have been absolutely amazing. But I have another surprise for you. Because on this side we have what looks like to be a Volga. Look at that, look how beautiful it is. A very, very beautiful car. And it says there, Volga. Look at that. Gorgeous car. It's, it's probably still running. Looks like, at least it's not as the other Zhiguri I showed you before. Gorgeous. Here you got a football field and a basketball court as well, so you can you can play either either one of those actually looks really good very nice So just to give you an example from our own lives about how how much people really care about making money, uh, Marina actually ordered a um, delivery, right? She needed to have some stuff delivered, heavy stuff, furniture delivered from one city to another. And they agreed. They said, okay, uh, we will do it. And they kind of agreed, right? But when the day come, they, they promised they're going to come on this date from, you know, 2 to 4 o'clock, uh, 2 to 4 p.m. And then we were waiting for them. Nobody showed up. We called the operator. The operator is like, okay, let, let me give you the number to these guys directly. We tried calling the guys. They're not picking up. And then we called them the next day. Ends up they rescheduled us without telling us, without anything. And why did they do it? They had an order, right? They had people wanting to actually purchase something. But uh, they decided maybe, maybe they were busy. Maybe they, they had full of orders. But that is not something that you do. You got an order for business. You got a customer that's paying you a bunch of money. And it's not, it wouldn't even be that cheap. It would cost a pretty penny. But they had another reason. So they lost the customer and they didn't get money. They, you know, bad customer service and all that. Now, my theory is that, well, 
they don't want to do it, right? They don't want to do it. Maybe they were they, they did all the, the they had enough orders. They didn't really feel like doing it. But this is how business here is done, right? It's kind of like here and there. And chances are these people that wanted to do it, they probably have their own apartments. They don't really need to make that much money. Maybe they were tired that day, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is how business is done in Eastern Europe for the most part. I'm not saying everybody. But I'm saying for the most part, this is how it's done. That would never be the case in, in the U.S., in New York. Imagine in New York, somebody does not fulfill uh, an order from a customer. That's crazy. And after walking around with all these buildings, as you can see over there, we entered something that in Russian is called частный sector, which means these are now private houses, private residences. This, I thought this was a hotel, but it's not a hotel. And so we have an area there where people, people with money obviously, went ahead and built stuff. Now take a look how, how it's done, right? Take a look. It's clean. You know, outside it, could, could, it definitely needs a little bit of work. Inside needs a little bit of work. But the building for the most part is very, very presentable. And this building too. And that is because these people obviously, you know, this is their own money. They weren't given this, this house by anybody, right? They have surveillance. They have a lot of this, and you have a lot of these buildings here. It's kind of hard to see, but this whole area on, on my right is really built with people's own money, right? So look at this. You have nice bricks here, nice uh, fence, and then you have a house down there. And here you go, same thing. You have a building that's been here for many years, and then you have a, a private residence. Look at that one where, you know, it's more modern which was bought after the whole communist thing collapsed. Gorgeous building, right? Absolutely gorgeous, nice rock, very presentable. Looks very clean, you know, because people care. And same thing with the building after it. A little, uh, little different color, it's yellow as opposed to kind of this reddish color. And same thing, very nicely upkept. Because, you know, when people have their own money, when they, something wasn't given to them, they value it a lot more. And this is the explanation for a lot of things, really. And then you got your obligatory tires here. I know you all love when I show you how the tires are used here in Ukraine. I know you, you all going to be leaving some comments here. But yeah, they love their tires here. And I honestly don't understand the purpose of these tires. My first guess is that so park, so cars don't park on the uh, over here on the uh, on the grass. But other than that, I have no idea. Kind of like that part, that car right there. But I don't really know. All right, so we decided to take the tram because uh, we're going to a really cool restaurant. And this tram st steps, uh, this tram stops right in front of it. Now, actually, I haven't taken public transportation. Uh, meaning everything except a metro in like ages. So it's actually interesting to try something. exited the uh, the tram and we are back in Podol which we actually did a video about back in the winter and this is an awesome neighborhood and it took just 10 minutes on the tram which is absolutely incredible you know sometimes you're amazed by the uh, public transportation now we're gonna go ahead and check out some of the coolest restaurants for I would say Middle Eastern food kind of this place has been closed for like a half a year or even a year and now it is open with a new name and this is the name right here this is the place leader donor uh, we're gonna try something out and these donors looks absolutely amazing i'm gonna try that donor with uh telatina which means uh beef with rice you have some of the other ones it looks absolutely delicious let's go and check it out Baklava 
found the house right here, which is very, very nice. I also ordered some Iran, which I absolutely love. I love this drink. And Marina got some tomato juice, which is also a very nice drink, but I love my Iran, especially in the summer, especially with Turkish type food. It's absolutely amazing. All right, so I got my dish. We have the rice. We have the meat here, beef, some other things, um, some pickles, tomatoes. And then we also have the lavash, which is a very similar meal to mine, but except it's wrapped in the lavash. Looks really good. Bon appetit to everybody. our brunch no not even brunch what is this early dinner I would say early dinner at this restaurant they just had remodeling and it's absolutely gorgeous and actually this place uh, I discovered it by accident like a year ago and then they then there was the whole COVID thing and then it was the whole uh, remodeling thing and finally we were able to find it and get back to it. it's absolutely delicious and now we're here in Padol we're gonna get some tea at my favorite spot which is very nice but actually Padol is really nice this time of year because they got a lot of these outdoor coffee shops it's actually kind of quiet really nice place and we actually don't go to Padol all that much um, maybe we should go here more often but we don't really do it but it's nice it's very cool so we stumbled on some concert here right here in Podol just walking around did not expect it but as you can see there it is a little a little area some some street food I'm not gonna be trying that burrito because I don't want to be disappointed and forget what a real burrito tastes like and so here's a little a little show and so it's not only a food market apparently they have clothes they have plants you can buy they have all kinds of stuff so it's kind of nice, unexpected completely, but kind of nice. We have some clothes, some good stuff. Here you got, you got some designer clothes, some accessories, stuff like that. 